Hey guys, how's it going? So in the last video we covered a lot of the basics about concurrency and now we're gonna actually dive deep in the code and look at some Go code and I'm gonna compare it to Node.js as we go along, okay? So let's jump into the screen. All right, so what I wrote here is a basic main function in Go. It's just gonna print forever, hello world concurrent. And if I run that, you're gonna see that it's just boring. It just goes on printing forever. Let's say that I want to move this into a different function. Uh, let's call it print hello world. Okay, so now what you're going to see here is that I moved this for loop to the print hello world function and I'm going to print the end after this is done. Obviously this is never gonna be done, so we're never gonna print the end, right? Which is kind of obvious, I don't feel like running this. Now, if I want this to execute in its own little thread, like I explained in the previous video, remember I just have to put go in the beginning and basically as the execution thread comes, it's just gonna sort of fork execution and run this at the same time or concurrently with this. It could be in parallel, maybe not, depending on whether you have one core or not. Let's go ahead and run this. Now you're gonna see that it's sort of disappointed because you just printed the end instead of you know executing this for loop. And that is because once this function is over, the program stops, right? So you probably experience this in Node as well, right? So in Node, if you execute a promise or you set a callback and you just don't wait for it, your code is just gonna end, it's not gonna do anything. So let's add here a little uh, sleep time. We're gonna block this main function and then it's gonna print the end and then it's gonna end. So it's gonna, print this thing for two seconds because after two seconds it prints this and then it ends. All right, and there you go. So where is the end? If you scroll up a little bit, you'll see that the end is somewhere here. And that's because, you know, they're executing at the same time. So between the time that the program ends, uh, this is still running, right? But let's just focus on this for a minute, okay? Because Creating a function in, in Node.js where you have a while loop that goes on forever is not as easy as this, right? Because this would basically, in Node, if you had a while true, that would basically block the event loop. So you wouldn't be getting your get requests or you wouldn't be executing anything else. It would just be running that while loop forever and you, and, and you would, you, you know, just get stuck. But in Go, because these things are running concurrently, you don't have to worry about that, okay? So this is one of the areas where, look how simple this is compared to the, the Node.js alternative. In Node, you would have to maybe import a module for you know, work, a web worker if you wanted to achieve something like this, or you would have to here in your for loop, you'd have to somehow do process next tick and then call this again so it can run for a little bit, then yield, then come back, run for a little bit, then yield. All right, so, in reality, I don't need this function, right? Because you can do something that is very similar to JavaScript. You can declare a function and then execute it immediately. Uh, this exists in JavaScript as well, okay? So I could just as easily move this four to come here, okay? You can have, you can do other cool things like let's duplicate this for a little bit. We're gonna improve on this as we go, okay? But here we're gonna we're gonna print hello, and here we're gonna print hi. You can see that they'll execute concurrently. So if I stop this, you know you have hello, hi, hello, hi, hello, hi, taking turns right in the scheduler to run. All right, so now that we're here, let's do another quick comparison to Node. In Node, when you're writing your code, if you're using something like async and await, you write your code already with concurrency in mind. You make your functions in your service, for instance, that are, let's say you have a user service that's querying a, a database or something like that. Your find user, you mark it as async so that people can await on it. And you sort of write your code in an asynchronous way. In Go, you write your code to be blocking most of the time, right? And if somebody needs your code, to not block, they can just put it in a Go routine. For instance, inside this Go routine, if I had to do my user service uh, dot find user or something like that, and like I would pass in an ID, this will return a user and an error maybe. Okay. Uh, so and here I can just use the user. Okay. So in Go, you mostly write blocking code like this, and then you can put in Go routines whatever you want. 
All right, so the next thing we're gonna look at is how do you communicate between Go routines? And for that, we're first gonna look at channels, which are one of the best features in Go, although some people don't are not big fans of channels. Um, they have some problems that I'm gonna mention as well, uh, but they're a very nice way to communicate between Go routines. And uh, we'll look at that in the next video.